Okay, quickly, because this is a short section, section 8.8. Um, they try to introduce some proportional things here and some percentage stuff and try to get you used to some of the stuff that you did in the past. But that's not nearly as important as the proportions and solving the proportions are going to be. So I'm really just trying to get you through this whole solving proportions thing and making it quite simple for what you already know. It's my job making things simple, right? So we're going to start with this one right here. First of all, you need to know that a proportion is when you have a fraction equal to a fraction. And when we have a fraction equal to a fraction, there's a very simple way of solving those problems. So right here, anytime we have a fraction equal to a fraction, then you're always allowed to cross multiply. It's the only time you're allowed to cross multiply. Everything else has a different title for it. But cross multiplication is really just when a fraction is equal to a fraction. So, change colors. Different color. Since I have a fraction equal to a fraction here, this isn't even written as a fraction right now, but I can write it as a fraction by putting a one underneath it. Now it's a fraction equal to a fraction. It looks right. That means that you're allowed to cross multiply. So when I go to cross multiply, it's bottom times the opposite top here and bottom times the opposite top there. So on this side, I'll have my 8 times my x minus 3. And because that's an equal sign there, I get an equal sign here. And then on this side, I have 1 times 40, which is just 40. Now I've got simple equation, no fractions, ready to solve. So this is going to give me 8x minus 24 is equal to 40. Then I can add 24 to both sides. So 8x is equal to 64. Divide both sides by 8. You get x is equal to 8. Now, we started off with a fraction equal to a fraction. So because we have that fraction, now we have to check all of our answers to make sure it's not going to give us something we can't have. So we, told, we talked before about how you couldn't have a zero in the bottom of your fraction. So I need to make sure that if I plug an 8 in up here, I don't get a zero on the bottom of either of my fractions. Because if I do, that means that that's not really the answer. So, I plug an 8 in up here, that's fine because it doesn't do anything. There is no x there. But plug an 8 in for x here, 8 minus 3 gives me a 5. We can have a 5 on the bottom of a fraction. We can't have a 0 on the bottom of a fraction. So that means this is a good answer. Doesn't mean that it's right, it just means that it's not wrong. Okay, so for this one, once again, we have a fraction equal to a fraction. So that allows me to cross multiply. So on this side, I have my 5 times 7b plus 1 equals, because it was an equal sign. On the other side, I have my 3 times 3 plus b. Five times seven B is thirty-five B plus five. And then three times three is nine plus three B. Subtract three B from both sides. That's thirty-two B plus five is equal to nine. Subtract 5 from both sides. 32b is equal to 4. Divide both sides by 32, because that's the number in front of the letter. b is equal to 4 and 32 can reduce down to 1 over 8. Now, 
if I put 1 over 8 here, I get 3 and 1 over 8. That's okay as long as we don't get a 0. If I put 1 over 8 up here, I get 7 over 8 plus 1, which is not 0. And that's all we care about. Over here. Okay, fine. Go ahead and try yourself. Hit pause. Let's see if you can do it. Okay. Thirty-five is equal to P times P plus two. Huh. Thirty-five is equal to P squared plus two P. Got a square in there. So we're going to have to move the 35 over and get everything equal to zero. Minus 35, because we moved it to the other side. Now I get to factor. Do this and multiply to give you 35 and subtract to give you two. That's right, seven and five. Plus seven minus five, which means P plus 7 is equal to 0, or P minus 5 is equal to 0. P equals negative 7. P is equal to 5. Now, if I put a negative 7 up here, negative 7 plus 2 gives me a negative 5. That's okay to have. If I put a 5 up here, 5 plus 2 gives me 7, that's okay to have. So both of these are good to go. We don't know which one it is. Could be both. We don't know. Won't know. So we leave it that way. Two answers. We knew we had to have two answers because we had a square in our problem. Yep, two answers. So, classwork and homework. Simple, quick, easy. Should be fun. Piece of cake. Just saying. Do it here. Page 248. Sorry, 348. Numbers 21, 25, 31, and 35. Homework. Same page. Numbers. 19, 23, 27, 33, and 37. There you go. Piece of cake. You will see me tomorrow.